Delivering a two-year or three-year EU-funded project requires considerable project management skills, accountability and political tact. Every project is different. There is no one-size-fits-all approach, but there are a few vital factors to success. The first thing I want to talk about is, your management com is the management committee of your partnership and consortium. In all projects, there is a lead partner who acts on behalf of the project and is the legal entity that draws down the money and dispenses it to the other partners and accounts for the money and delivery of the project on a day-to-day -day basis. But don't for a minute think that the lead partner can do what they want. The lead partner is authorised on behalf of the management committee. The first thing a project needs is a partnership agreement between its members. This outlines who does what, it defines, authorises and delegates powers to the lead partner and outlines all contingency issues. What happens if partner disagrees and fall out? What is the process if a partner leaves during the life of a project? What is the process in wrapping up the project at the end of the time? And who owns what assets, etc. The agreement should also outline ownership of intellectual property rights and other obligations of partners. It is critical to get this right early on. The management group must meet regularly and get reports on all activities done in its name. It should also make final decisions on problem issues as they arise. A partner dropping out of a, pro of a project during its lifespan can be very disruptive. You should have this addressed in the partnership agreement and a contingency process for replacing a partner. However, this must be agreed by the EU management authority involved before any new partners can take part. Remember that you will have a legally binding contract with the EU as well as a legally binding partnership agreement, so make sure you know what you're signing before you sign on the dotted line. The next issue I want to talk about is staffing. If you're only getting co-funding of say 50 or 55 percent, then in effect you are providing existing staff to the project and the EU is providing the project money for the current staff to deliver actions. If however you get 80 percent co-funding, then you are probably looking at recruiting project staff specifically to deliver the project on top of current staff numbers. The lead partner will probably be the legal employer unless set out differently in the partnership agreement. Getting the right reporting structure to the management group is very important. Make sure there are proper contracts of employment in place, that recruitment is done in line with EU guidelines, and that all employment laws and obligations to staff are met, and these are basic requirements. The third issue to discuss is finance and reporting. I've already mentioned the issue regarding the percentage of co-funding, but here I am discussing the actual drawdown of EU funds. Each program is different, but many do not provide upfront funding. Thus, you may need to carry the costs of setting up the running of the project for the first six months and be able to wait another three or four months to receive your first tranche of funding. This is a major issue for many projects and a deterrent for some to even sign the final contracts. Once the first six month payment is made, then the following tend to happen more easily and of course the last payment will be received six months after the end of the actual project. The EU always makes good its end of the contract, but not necessarily quickly. The drawdown is based upon reporting of financial and non-financial outcomes. It is important to get your accounting systems right up front. Any issue in the report that raises questions that come back to you puts off the payment date of your finances. The cleaner the paperwork, the quicker you receive your money. The non-financial relate to your key performance indicators and deliverable outcomes as set out in your contract, which usually comes from your initial application. Getting your non-financial outputs and indicators is just as important as the financial ones. Again, the less questions to be asked in the return, the quicker you get paid. Another related issue is the interim and final evaluation reports. If the project is three years long, you will probably need an interim and final evaluation. Shorter projects need a final evaluation only. These evaluations aim to assess what happened, look at what was learned, and what can be shared as best practice with other European projects and institutions. It is pro possible to write these evaluations internally if you have the skills within the partnership. However, many projects would bring in a consultant or researcher to do this work. These evaluations are very important and properly done can assist in the dissemination of best practice and knowledge of the project. A few final comments. 
please make sure that all the EU and program logos are included in all stationery, paperwork and promotions. It is a condition of the contract and is seen as bad form if you do not, as you are not acknowledging the people giving you the money. Having an initial plan is great, but remember that these are all in the main pilot projects. Things will change. You'll find out that some assumptions you made were wrong and you will learn new things, which affect the future direction of the project. All this good stuff, just remember two things. Record the learning for the final evaluation and get the agreement of the EU authority to changes of the plan before you do them. That being said, the EU has learned much more from the unsuspected things learned from mistakes than anything else. Pilot projects will go where they lead and do not try to predetermine the outcome. Finally, if you are really interested in EU funding on an ongoing basis, then join the network. If your organisation is big enough, then set up an EU funding function within the organisation. This can be internal staff, outsourced to consultants or researchers, or a mixture of both. The more you are involved, the more you learn. The more contacts and potential partners you know, and you can get input even into the EU's evaluation of their own programmes. This is the point where I mention that my contact details will follow shortly, and if I can be of assistance, then please get in touch. The EU can provide significant amounts of funding to assist your organisation try new models, methods or address newly arising issues. This funding can make things happen that might not happen in other circumstances, but it does require taking a serious interest in the area. Always remember that you don't have to lead a project to get involved. Initially act as a junior partner and get involved at a slower pace. That being said, EU, for, for EU funding programmes are always worth exploring. Good luck.